On today's episode, it's Topaz Studio 2, working with looks to create a series of photo art images. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're somebody who loves to create uh, photo art images, this will be a great tutorial for you today. And also, if you'd like to sell your images as photo art, this is also going to be good for you because I'm going to show you how to use Topaz Gigapixel AI to upsize, say, like stock images that you got from stock websites and turned into digital art and you want to sell those images. Or they could be your very own images that you've created yourself. I'll show you how to upsize them and get them ready to be printed into whatever size prints you want. And by the way, I want you to know that Topaz Gigapixel AI is on sale right now up until June 3rd. You'll save $20 off. It's normally $99.99. You'll get it for $79.99. Plus, you can use my promo code David Kelly and take an additional 15% off of that price. So it's a really good sale price. And also, the image quality bundle, which includes Gigapixel AI, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI all together, you can get that for... $159.99. It's normally $259.97. It's a $99.98 savings. Plus, when you use my promo code, David Kelly, you'll receive another 15% off of that. If you already have one or two pieces of the software in that bundle, you can complete that bundle for a special price. Plus the extra 15% savings with my promo code. Before I get into the meat of the tutorial and get into Topaz Studio 2, I just wanted to say a word or two about stock images. I have three sites that I like to use when I'm working with stock images for my tutorials or if I want to make images and sell them as digital art. And that would be Unsplash, which is what you see right here. Another one is called Pixabay. And another one is called Pexels. Now, these are all free stock image sites. And I want to talk about licensing and can you use these images and can you sell the images after you've turned them into art. Now, of course, we can use our own images, but sometimes we're looking for that certain image and you can go to a stock, a free stock site or a paid stock site, whichever you prefer. But I wanted to talk about licensing. OK, so let's take a look at the Unsplash license. Unsplash photos are made to be used freely. Our license reflects that all photos can be downloaded and used for free, commercial and non-commercial purposes. No permission needed. However, if you'd like to, if you post something online or whatever, it's not a bad idea to say where that image came from and link to it, which is a nice thing to do. Now, what is not permitted? Photos cannot be sold without significant modification. So if you're gonna if you're gonna sell this work, it's very important that you modify them. So we're turning them into art. Yes, you can sell these images. And the other thing you can't do is compile the photos from Unsplash to replicate a similar or competing service. It's always a good idea to look at the license terms for each one of the free stock websites. Now I'm on Pixabay right now. I'll be using this image today of this lotus flower. Let me click on it. And when you look here, you can see right here under free download, the Pixabay license. And you can click on that and you can read and see what you can do. But you can definitely alter the images. That's the important thing. You can't sell an image that has not been altered. Now, we're turning these into art, as I said earlier, so we can go ahead and sell these. But read the licensing terms. It's very important. And you'll find that on each one of the free stock websites. I just wanted to take that little time before this tutorial just so you could really understand what you can and can't do with stock images. Now let's get into the meat of this tutorial, working with Topaz Studio 2 and looks to come up with a series of photo art images. My preferred way of working with Topaz Studio 2 is out of Photoshop as a plugin because I get a lot more editing capability after the image comes back into Photoshop. That's why I do it. Anyway, I went ahead and duplicated the background layer so I'm not taking the actual background layer in. I want to take a copy of that in. That's important because we don't want to destroy the actual background layer. So now I'm going to go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to come up here to Filter and come to Topaz Studio 2 and click it. And that'll launch Topaz Studio 2 and we will get started. Now I already have a look made. And if you watched my last tutorial, which I will link at the end of this video, you can watch that and see all my steps. 
But then, I didn't show this in the tutorial, but I turned it into a look, and I'll show you how to make a look today. But anyway, I'll be using that look on a bunch of different images in a series. Now, to apply a look to an image, you can come over here to the right-hand side of the interface. You can come here where you can add filters. And this is how I built up my look by using a bunch of different filters in here. And again, watch that tutorial and you'll see what I did. But you can also add a look. And right next to add filter is add look. So click on that. Now you'll see here it says look category. Right now it's on my looks. These are all my looks that I've created. But if you click this drop-down, there's a bunch of looks that come preloaded right inside of Topaz Studio 2. And by the way, you can still purchase Topaz Studio 2, and I'll leave a link in the description below this video, and you can even use my promo code, David Kelly, on that to save an additional 15% if you don't have it yet. Now, as I understand, Topaz are not going to continue to update this software. I hope they do. I hope they change their mind. But if you decide you want to purchase it, I would recommend doing a free download first just to make sure it still works on your computer. That's important. I don't want you to purchase something that you can't use. But for most people, it's going to still work. I'm using the latest operating system in Mac. Now, as far as M1 Macs are concerned, I think it will work. Um, don't hold me to this, but I think you need to use Rosetta, but I'm not sure. If anybody knows for sure out there, please comment in the comment section below. It would be a great help to everyone. Now, in my last tutorial, I did an image of a bird, turned it into a piece of uh, photo art. And to do that, I used several different filters, kind of unique filters, in my opinion. And I saved that out as a look called bird. So let me click on this uh, bird's look and we'll see what kind of result we'll get. And there it is. I really like this effect. It's kind of like a watercolor look. Pretty interesting in my opinion. I like it. And I think it's important that you come up with your own signature looks because the looks you create define you as an artist. And everybody's looks will look different because, you know, we have all these different filters, but we interpret them the way we want. But each one of our looks will be unique to ourselves. Now, even if you use some of the looks that come with Topaz Studio 2, you can make changes to those looks and then they become your actual look. And then you could save that as your own look after you made some changes. But that's a really great starting point to get your creative juices flowing. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But right now I clicked on my look called birds. But you'll notice here, see where it says amount? There's a slider here. It says 100. I can take this opacity, it's an opacity slider, I can take this back and take some of that effect off. As you can see, I can alter the look by adjusting the opacity. So that's one thing I can do. So if I felt that effect was too strong, I could pull it back a little bit. But then what you need to do is click apply. Now that applies that look. Now you'll notice here, I have a group called birds. That's the name of the look, birds. But inside here, you have all the different filters I use. Like I use the, impre I started with the impression filter, then I went to an AI remix, and then another AI remix, then an impression filter, then a texture filter. And let me go ahead and shut these all off and show you. So we'll start here. This is what the image originally looks like, right? Now I'll turn the impression filter on and you can see the change I made. Then I added an AI remix filter to it. Now it looks like this. Then I added another AI remix filter. Now it looks like this. And then another impression filter and a texture on top of that. So this is my own unique look. And believe me, nobody else out there will have this look. I mean, you can copy this look and I don't mind and you can use it. That's fine. But I recommend that you change it to taste, make it look the way you want it to look. But I could come here, and this is what I mean. I could come in here and go to this texture and um, maybe take this opacity and draw it up more like this. Or I may want to use a different texture. Right now I'm using concrete, but I may want to use this texture called uh, Coliseum Sienna and see what that looks like. Okay, so that gives me a different effect. I can pull up the opacity on it. And I might say, you know what? I like this better. Now I can save this as a look. And to save a look, all you need to do, it's very simple, is you can come up to file, open file up and click save look here. Or you could come right over here in the right hand upper corner of the interface and say save look. And then just give it a name. I'll call this birds two. Okay, just to make it different. You can give it a description if you want and click OK. Now that'll live in your look. So if I go to add look, you'll see I have birds two right here. And it's just that easy to make a look, nothing to it, right? But the beauty of looks is once we get a look 
we can add that same look to a whole series of images, which is really, really cool. Especially when you want to sell art and you want to keep all your images like with a consistent look to them. So people could say, yeah, that's Jane or John's art. I can tell there's that signature style they have. And you could have different signature styles for different types of images that you're working on. So it's, it's pretty cool. And it's really unlimited what you can do here in Topaz Studio too. I'm going to go ahead and change this back. I'm just going to click on this concrete texture again, and that applies it. And I pull, I'm going to pull the opacity back again. And I think maybe right about there is good. But you could come into any of these filters, like Impression, any of these Remix filters, and alter things. Like I can come into Impression and change the paintbrush or the brush size or the stroke rotation, stroke length, anything. The sky is the limit. And it's pretty exciting, isn't it? Let me know in the description below what you think about working with looks and working with Topaz Studio 2 in general to create photo art. Now, here's a great tip if you start with a look even one of the uh looks that come with topaz studio 2 like i said when you alter things in there go ahead and save that out as a new look and give it a name and then you could come back and use it again and then it's just like a one click thing and you're good to go when i was actually creating this look it probably took me at least a half an hour to come up with the final look that i really like but you do that work up front and save it as a look and then the next time you bring an image in you want to apply that look just come up here to add looks find that look click it adjust the opacity and you're done you could even go back in and alter things a little bit if you want to make some tweaks and some changes but it's really fast and then after you have applied that look Come up here and click accept. That brings you right back into Photoshop. Grab another image and do the same thing. And you could do like five to 10 images with that same look on them. And you could probably do it in roughly no more than 10, 15 minutes tops. And you have a whole series of photo art that you can go ahead and get it ready to be printed out and to be sold. But the next thing I want to do is show you how to upsize your images in Gigapixel, especially if you're using stock images, because stock images can be a little bit on the small side. So we may need to upsize those to make photo art out of them. But before I show you Gigapixel, just take a look at some of the images that I made with my look. This is the one I just did. And here's another keeping with the bird theme, but you notice how the look is consistent. Here's another bird. But it can also work with other things other than birds. And this is one I just did in my last tutorial. Now here's a dog. And yet some more dogs. So, but you notice how the theme stays consistent with the overall looks. Hockey. You can use sports and flower photography. All with that same look. It's pretty interesting. And now for the bonus showing you how to upsize your images and get them ready to sell with Gigapixel AI. Now you'll notice that this image is, I'm at a resolution of 360 and that's what my Epson printer likes. And this image is a six by five roughly, okay? So I need to upsize that. What if I wanted to turn this into a larger print? And I also want to say that stock images are rather small. They're usually on the smaller size. Sometimes you can get a larger one, but you're going to really probably have to upsize a lot of stock images if you want to, you know, sell those and print them big. If you own Gigapixel AI, all you need to do is come over to File. Now, it doesn't live under the filters. It lives under File, and you got to go to Automate, and you will find topaz gigapixel ai there so give it a click and that will launch gigapixel ai and we'll upsize it right from photoshop by using the gigapixel ai plugin for photoshop now this is not an intense tutorial on using gigapixel ai i'm just going to show you really quickly how to use this to upsize your art pieces you have different ai models in topaz gigapixel ai you have standard lines art and cg low resolution and very compressed now, for me, there's two choices here, Art and CG. Art and CG is going to give you a little more texture, and I generally use the auto settings here. Okay, so this is Art and CG. Give it a second to update itself. But as you can see there, and I'll zoom in so you can see, you can see some texture in there. Now, notice the difference if I go to Standard. 
Give it a second to update itself here. When I'm in standard, you won't see that extra texture. If you want that extra texture, I recommend art and CG. If you don't, probably standard is going to get the job done for you. But then what you need to do is pick your uh, size that you want. Like you can go two times larger, four times or six. Like if I wanted to print this relatively big, I'd probably want to go at least four times. I could probably get, get around a you know, like it may be a 16 by 16. It's, it's not quite square, but around that size, you know what I mean? But you can just upsize up to six different times here. And you can see that's what the quality looks like. But now let me go ahead and, and notice the textures, but watch when I put it on art and CG. You'll see here after it updates here, you see a little bit more texture comes out. Now, if that's too sharp and too much texture, you can take this remove blur. Remember, I'm on an auto setting. You can take this and drag it back. So I'm going to drag it back to maybe right around like a 12, and it'll be less, it'll be less defined in its textures. So somewhere around there looks really good. But for me, I think I'm going to go with standard. I think I think that's going to look good. Depending if you're doing, this is more like a watercolor look, so I want to keep it soft. But if you want to do more of a, like an oil painting look, I would recommend using the Art and CG. But you do have the choices. And once you're totally satisfied with the model, like I chose standard and I adjusted my settings, uh, I pulled the remove blur back a little bit. In fact, on this one, I may bring it up just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more sharpness and texture, just a tiny bit. And if I'm happy, all I need to do is click apply. And I'll let this run in real time and you'll see how long it takes me on my computer, which is an iMac. It's a 2019 model with like an i9 processor. I'll put the information up on the screen so you can see. But here we are back in Photoshop. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. I'm gonna fit this to the screen. I'm gonna use my action on my TK8 CX panel. That fits it to screen. But as you can see, if you look at my ruler here, this is at a 360 resolution. It is like 24. I could print this a 24 by 22. I thought around a 16, but boy, was I wrong. Let's go up here to image and let's go to image size. And yeah, you can see my resolution is 360 and the width 24.322 by 22.478. So I could print it at least up to that size, even a little larger than that. And I did upsize this four times the original size. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. But that's how easy it is to upsize. Now, if I come up to my history, you can see if I go one step above here, this is how big the image really is. But now it's this big. And as you can see, I can get a beautiful large print out of this stock image that I turned into a piece of photo art. Well, there it is, everyone. So look, you can make yourself a look in Topaz Studio 2 and get a signature look. And when you want to sell your art, you can keep your art pieces consistent and people will start to recognize your style as a photo artist. And Topaz Studio 2, I love this piece of software. Man, Topaz, you need to keep making this kind of software. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And don't forget, Topaz Gigapixel AI is on sale right now, a $20 savings. You'll save another 15% off that with my promo code, David Kelly. Links will be in the description below this video. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.